morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Um, Thank you for being here with me. Uh, I know we're all missing those times of greeting when we get up and move around and shake hands and offer hugs to one another, but would you take a moment just to stand, uh, stay in your place and uh, maybe offer a wave to those around you, let them know that you're, you're glad to see them here today. Thank you. That's our socially distanced way of greeting one another this morning. Um, It is Palm Sunday today. We'll be recognizing that. Also, um, in terms of announcements, there's uh, next week is Easter already, friends. So this is Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday. Uh, I hope that will be a meaningful week for you. I will be praying for all of you uh, as we journey toward Easter Sunday together next Sunday um, to celebrate resurrection and life. Um, I don't have any prayer announcements to share with you by name. We've got those that have kind of been uh, continued prayers. I'll I'll ask you to keep those in mind. Uh, And also I want to take a few moments just that uh, we might speak to the Lord in uh, clearing our hearts and our minds, preparing us for worship, and also to acknowledge those who might be in our thoughts and prayers. So let's pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for bringing us together in worship this morning, for those who are here in person, as well as those who are are watching or listening with us at home, um, how important it is for us to take this time. Would you open your word to us today? Would you renew us and refresh us, revive us? Uh, We do thank you for the many, many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We also lift up to you those who are in need of your help and your healing, Lord, and ask that you would uh, use us as well to uh, be a conduit of your spirit, to care for those around us, to to help in the healing that you offer. Um, Help us to build our relationship with you. Speak to us. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to read to you from Psalm 34 this morning that we might be reminded and encouraged to magnify the Lord together in this place today. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I invite the praise team to come forward and continuing to lead us in our call.
Friends, it was Rachel's birthday yesterday. When your mom has a microphone, everyone's gonna know. Does that cost you a dollar? I don't know, will that cost me a dollar? If I say she turned 26, that'll cost me a dollar. Yes, I did have her when I was three years old. 29. Have you ever thought about what you really want out of life? Um, maybe some of you are like, no, nah, not really, and others of you are like, all the time, I think about what I want out of life. Um, might be a strange question. Maybe you're saying, well, of course, everybody kind of wants the same thing, to be healthy and happy, right? Or maybe it's more about that, uh, the American dream. You know, you want a, a home and you want the 2.5 kids, I never understood the 0.5, but I guess it averages out that way. You want a nice car, you want a, a good job, you want enough money to live comfortably. Is that what you really want out of life? You know, I had somebody tell me the other day, uh, when this COVID stuff is over, then I'll be happy. And uh, while I don't disagree, and we all have frustrations with the COVID stuff, uh, what next? Are you telling me when COVID's over, you will be happy for the rest of your life? Are we prepared? What do you want out of life? What does that mean? I want you to use your, your mind's eye a little bit. Um, there was a, a French painter by the name of Rollet that was commissioned to paint a series of, of pictures that would depict what he saw as contemporary life. And he, he painted these three pictures. The first one, um, he shows a, a very frantic man who is searching for a very important piece of paper. And the room in which he's searching is in shambles. The drawers are open, there are papers all over the place, the bed is torn apart, there are pictures off the wall with the backs torn off. Um, and, and following this person around the room is the figure of the devil who is holding this missing piece of paper high above the man's head. And this man continues to be desperately searching, searching for that important piece of paper. And the artist says this is meant to show all people as they try to find that one magic or ideal thing, place, person, project, whatever it is that will bring happiness into their lives. Shows people searching restlessly for something to make life happy, but happiness is never found. Now the second painting in his series shows a, a haggard man in a large field, and he's digging with a spade. And behind him are, are numerous holes that he's already dug, and beside each hole is a box. And the cover on that box is open, but all of the boxes are empty. And for this one, the artist said, this is a person who is searching for goals in life, but never really finding one that makes them happy. Always looking for something bigger and better, never a moment to enjoy what one has. And the third and final picture that this artist painted uh, shows a man who is bound and gagged, and he's tied to a chair. And uh, he's just got a look of terror on his face and in his eyes as he watches a thief rob his room of all his valuables. The artist says this picture illustrates a person's futile attempt to find happiness through things and possessions in life. Now when you think about those pictures, do those paintings prove to be a, a true picture of what life looks like? Is that our contemporary life? always searching for something or clinging to our stuff in hopes of happiness. Well, in John 14, verse 6, uh, maybe you can recite it with me by this time, Jesus says he is the way and the truth and the life. What we really need and want out of life is to follow Jesus. It's as simple as that. Because when we follow Jesus, all the other stuff in life just falls into place. It's only through God we find contentment. We won't have to be searching for things or digging to find treasure or be afraid of being robbed of our possessions because we will know and we will understand that on the, the large scale of things, that other stuff doesn't measure up. 
There's nothing as important as our relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I am certainly not a famous artist. Uh, I can draw a pretty mean stick man, but that's about it. But I hope to paint a picture with you today. Um, I want us to see more clearly what Jesus looks like, the one in whom the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells, to paint a picture of the great I am, the one who calls himself the way and the truth and the life. And when you can't paint or draw worth a hoot like me, you need to rely on your imagination. And I'm going to ask you to do that with me today, to let a picture take a shape in your mind. Um, we can do this with our Bibles. We should be doing this with our Bibles. Let the words paint a picture for you. So here's some words for you. This is John chapter 10. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Uh, some translations say, have it to the full, life to the full. A better life. What does a better life look like? The picture Jesus paints for your life, the picture that the Bible makes clear for your life is that of a, a life story overflowing with, with color and contrast and, and hue and, and brightness, abundance, richness, depth, meaning. Jesus is the way to experience life in its fullest and clearest, to know God in his fullness, to know joy in its fullness. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, it says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. The life that's truly life. Think about that for a moment. Think, if you can, about the sweetest things in your life. Think of your closest friend. Think of your spouse. Think of your kids. Think of the colors of spring. Think of something that gives you so much joy you want to jump up and down. Even if your knees hurt or your back hurts or you're tired, you would actually jump up and down because you would have so much joy. Think of chocolate. Think of deep, nourishing sleep. Don't go there. Just think of it. There is a life that's truly life. And then there's a counterfeit life. A false or a, a fake life. A counterfeit life puts hope in wealth, in, in getting more stuff, and is never content with what is. A false life exchanges what's right for what feels good. A fake life is arrogant, thinks it's better than others. A counterfeit life puts stuff ahead of people, ideas of right and wrong ahead of relationships. A counterfeit life will consume us if we let it. It'll complicate things, it'll rob us of joy. A counterfeit life is described in scripture pretty bluntly, actually. It's called death. In Ephesians chapter 2, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. And then there's Jesus, the life that's truly life. In, in John chapter 11, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And he says, do you believe this? Back to Ephesians, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace 
expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. You don't have to be an artist to see that picture. I want you to close your eyes for a moment, if you would. Don't go to sleep on me, please. Close your eyes for a moment. Imagine yourself surrounded by the incomparable riches of God's love. Imagine the feeling of being wrapped up in his grace. Imagine sitting beside the way, the truth, and the life in places so beautiful and stunning as beyond compare. Imagine yourself being able to feel his warmth and his love, his affection for you as his beloved child. That's God's gift to you in Christ Jesus. Now open your eyes. I don't want to lose you. But stay in that feeling. Stay in that place. It's God's delight that you believe in him. It's God's delight that you belong to him. It's God's desire that everyone here and everyone in this community and everywhere in this world, people would hear of a wonderful Savior. And that we might all respond in faith to his gift of mercy to us in the person and life of Jesus, the life that he invites us all to join. The life. There's a, an old Peanuts comic strip. You're familiar with Peanuts, Charlie Brown, Snoopy? Yeah. Charlie Brown and Lucy were discussing, of all things, theology. And Lucy says to Charlie Brown, you know, on the great cruise ship of life, some people take their deck chairs to the bow. Some people take their deck chairs to the stern. Where do you put your deck chair, Charlie Brown? And Charlie replies by saying, Lucy, I can't even get my deck chair unfolded. How do we relate to that? Are you headed to the stern on the ship where you strain your eyes over the trackless ocean for some sign of where you've been looking behind you? Or are you headed to the bow where we try to peer into the empty distance ahead in hope of discovering where you're going? What's next? What's next? Maybe it doesn't matter which direction you're looking ahead or behind because the reality is that while we do this, we're still searching. We're still searching. And we're looking for something more. We're looking for something or someone to answer that question. What, what's going on? What is this all about? And friends, whether we realize it or not, what we're truly looking for, what we're searching for, is God. God's deepest desire is to connect with his creation. And sadly, most people's problem is not how to discover God, it's whether or not they want to discover God. If they even want to know him. They're not willing to even open their deck chair, if you will. Maybe that's you, maybe that's somebody you know. Chances are, if, if you're here with me today, or if you're listening today, you're, you're feeling a bit more confident because you've already accepted Christ into your heart. You understand salvation. So here's my question for you. Friends, how's life? How is life? You've allowed him to be your savior, but have you allowed him to be the Lord of your life? What's life? It is living. Jesus came to bring us life, abundant life, now and forever, this life and the next. Do you want it? Open your deck chair. Relax. The Lord says, be still and know that I am God. The great I am that we've been talking about the last few weeks. Allow time to be in his presence. And when you do, you can be free. Suddenly you're free from worrying about what might happen in the future. And you're free from regret and guilt from the past because Jesus takes care of all of it. Suddenly all of your work and all of your relationships, everything is seen in this new and glorious light. 
because you'll see all these things through the eyes of Jesus, who is your Savior, your Lord. God is the creator of life. He's the sustainer through which all of life exists, and in him and him alone, we find eternal life. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Jesus doesn't say, I'm the way to a little bit better life. He says, I am the life. It's one of those always has been, always will be kind of promises. It's not a do this or do that situation. It's a know me situation. If you know me, you know the truth. Jesus says, if you know me, you know the way. If you know me, you know the life. Do you want to merely exist, or do you want to live? The way to God is its not just a road, it's not just a ritual, it is a relationship. A relationship with Jesus Christ, that is life. Will you follow Christ? Get the life that he offers. Today, I want to pose a challenge to you. I want you to take at least 30 minutes of your week this week. 30 minutes out of one day this holy week to get away from everything else. Away from work or school or play, from family, from everything, and spend 30 minutes in real conversation with God. Build that relationship that will take you the way that leads to eternal life. That's my challenge for you. That's your assignment for the week. Start building that relationship with your God and Savior. Get away from everything else. Get away from all the distractions, the people, the interruptions, and take some personal time with your God. And right now, will you celebrate the presence of the living God with me? Let's pray together. God, you don't give us all the answers about where we're going on the road of life. You don't tell us all the details about how we'll be taken care of or might, what might happen to us along the way, but you do give us yourself in the form of your son, Jesus Christ, to be our guide, to be our shepherd. And Lord, whether you shield us from harm or you strengthen us to bear it, help us to trust you. Because in you, Lord, we find the way and the truth and the life, now and forever. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Friends, I'm going to ask you to open your hymnals uh, to number 406, 406. Uh, stand if you're able and comfortable doing so, and we're going to join together in singing wonderful words of life. It's number 406 in your hymnal.
Please be seated. As I mentioned earlier, today is uh, we recognize today as Palm Sunday. Uh, there are a few palm fronds in the back of the sanctuary if you'd like to take one home for your family today. Again, I want you to use your mind's eye, uh, paint a picture. It's only a matter of days before he would be crucified and Jesus had just entered Jerusalem. The crowd had been waving palm branches and, and shouting his praise. The onlookers weren't entirely sure what was happening. And in Matthew's words, in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, it says, when Jesus had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? Who is this? This question doesn't only belong in first century Jerusalem. Throughout the centuries, continuing today, people have been offering all kinds of opinions and, and speculating on the identity of Jesus of Nazareth. Some say he was some sort of a guru, uh, a wise and gentle teacher of trite platitudes and object lessons. Others say Jesus was one in a long line of prophets. More than one theologian has argued that there are only three possibilities as to Christ's identity. Either he was a liar, falsely claiming to be God, uh, or he was a lunatic, bona fide crazy and delusional, or he was, in fact, who he said he was the Son of God, our Lord. Jesus wasn't low profile when he entered Jerusalem. Matthew reported that when he entered the city on Palm Sunday, all of the city was moved. Everyone was asking, who is this? Do you want to see God move in such a way in your own city that everything is stirred up? your neighbors begin to ask, who is this? Do you want that? Do you want your neighbors to say, who is this? That put your life back to get together and made something beautiful of it. Who is this who restored your family? Who is this who delivered you from addiction? Who is this that turned your sadness into joy? Who is this? What does it take? For God to move and shake and stir an entire city. We can learn from this one day, 2,000 years ago, happened when Jesus' followers began to experience him, extol him, extend him to others. People around began to ask, who is this? As Jesus began his descent into Jerusalem, the people began to honor and extol him. They literally carpeted the road with their coats and with palm branches as they shouted their praise, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! What brought this outburst of praise? I haven't heard anybody hollering in here today other than me. What does it take? Put yourself in that crowd. Think about it. We'll figure it out. Look over there at Bartimaeus. Just the last uh, few days ago, a week ago in Jericho, he was blind and begging by the side of the road, but then Jesus noticed him, stopped, gave him sight with a spoken word, and now Bartimaeus is seeing everything around him. No wonder he's praising Jesus. Look over there at that man with tears of joy streaming down his face. Who is it? Well, it's Lazarus. Lazarus of Bethany. Not long ago, he was dead and in the grave until Jesus gave him new life. And what about that guy over there, that formerly crippled man who for 38 years could be found lying by the pool of Bethsaida. Look at him now. He was crippled, but now he's singing and dancing, leaping and shouting for joy, his own hosannas to the king of kings. Do you and I have any less reason to extol Jesus, to shout our hosannas today? 
We've seen his greatest miracle ever. His provision, new birth through his death and resurrection. We were dead in our sin until he brought us new life. When we praise Jesus for what he's done in our lives, when we share those stories with other people, people are going to start asking, who is this? Who transformed your life? Who is this that put your family back together? Who brought you peace in tragedy? Who is this who enabled you to be victorious over your troubles? Who is this who gave you hope? No matter how dark. On your darkest day, who is this that gave you that hope? Who is this? This is Jesus. The way, the truth, and the life. Friends, as we dismiss today, I'm going to ask you to stand once more. Please. I'm going to push you way, way out of your comfort zone and ask you to open your hands, palms up to the Lord, that you might receive. I'm going to share a, it's actually a poem by an unknown author, but I'd like to use it as our benediction today. May the strength of God pilot me. May the power of God preserve me. May the wisdom of God instruct me. May the hand of God protect me. May the way of God direct me. May the shield of God defend me. May the host of God guard me against the snare of the evil one and the temptations of this world. May Christ be with me. Christ before me, Christ in me, Christ over me. May your salvation, Lord, be always mine, this day and forevermore. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Be with you on this holy week. I look forward to seeing you on Resurrection Day. Have a blessed week.